Bahama makes his move in the U.S. court to remove Bahamian debt horse. I'm Clint Watson. The stories ahead in the Bahamas tonight. Plus, a homicide and a shooting incident keep the police very busy today. And then meet the 2015 All Bahamas Merit Scholar. The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. A move in the U.S. court today to exclude Bahamian businesses owned, owed by Bahamar. Good evening, everyone. I'm Chris Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us. The filing shows that Bahamar seeks to dismiss the Bahamian debtors from the Chapter 11 cases, which in essence will prevent Bahamian companies from being paid through the bankruptcy provisions. Tonight, Clint Watson talks to a leading attorney about today's filings and the implication that now arises as a result of this latest move. There are more than 160 pages of company names reportedly listed as debtors of Bahamar, many of them Bahamian companies. On Thursday, notice was served in the Bankruptcy Court of Delaware that these establishments have been notified that Bahamar wishes to not pay them through the Chapter 11 bankruptcy provision. In fact, the latest filing is a direct move to actually have the U.S. court sanction Bahamar's intent to not pay these companies. Many of these businesses quite familiar to the Bahamian community others government entities. Popular attorney and legal counsel Ramona Farkasen, after reviewing the document posted on Bahamar's site, confirmed the move. They have filed a motion to dismiss or in some way allow the courts in the United States to disregard Bahamian debtors. It's not a final decision. It is just that the debtors are being served notice that this is the intention, that we do not want to honor your debt. Farkerson says it's now up to the scores of Bahamian companies, including the government, to determine based on the amount they're owed by Bahama, whether it's feasible to get a U.S. attorney to fight and make representation on their behalf in the U.S. courts. It's certainly if you have millions of dollars invested and it's owed, then certainly you ought to be following what's happening. I would say not only following, but I would trust that depending on your indebtedness and how much interest you have in wanting to recoup or recover those funds, that you should also engage counsel in the United States so that you're, you can be represented and you can be heard. Of course, you can send Bahamian attorneys, they can go over, be able to go over, and what we call watching briefs may not be able to have uh, rights of audience, but certainly we can watch and monitor, and that happens all the time. The Bahamas does not recognize Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Instead, according to Farkasen, we follow a process called winding up, a term we've heard in this process when the government petitioned its own Supreme Court on the matter and announced the intention to appoint provisional independent liquidators. This process has since been put on hold by the government to allow time for the negotiations between the parties involved to proceed with hopes of reaching a resolution. And as this issue continues to unfold, Farkasen suggests that Bahamas keep abreast on the procedure proceedings not only here but indeed in the United States of America. We now have to look at what we as a people have invested in Bahama because our leaders clearly have extended credit, clearly have extended or given our land, whether it's been leased, whether it's been given. I mean, so much has been done and there's a dollar figure and we've been told that it's in excess of what, 20 million or so? So we should be very interested as to what is happening with our money. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Senator the Honorable Allison Maynard Gibson, again tonight responding to opposition criticism about an apparent conflict of interest in the Bahama project, this time from former Free National Movement Chairman Darren Cash. In a statement released late last night, Ms. Gibson asserted that Mr. Cash should know better than to act in such an appalling bad faith. She invites him to review her prior statement on the matter, which speaks for itself. 
The Attorney General continued that, as Mr. Cash knows full well, it is a matter of public record that shortly after becoming a cabinet minister in 2002, she disposed of her entire interest in Gibson and Company, and since then has not been in possession of any confidential information relating to Mr. Ersmerlian or any of his affiliated companies. Mrs. Gibson concluded in her statement that Mr. Cash is intentionally misleading the Bahamian public, and for this, he should apologize. Now, the crime news has been the talk of all day. Police investigating several major criminal matters that kept them quite busy this morning. The first was the murder of a young man, followed by a police-involved shooting, then the hunt and capture of a man on the most wanted list, who was also shot by police. Janae Noel Ferguson starts our crime news recap from the scene of this morning's murder in the central New Providence area. Another male released on bail for a serious offense and was being electronically monitored, gunned down Thursday morning right outside of his doorsteps on Burial Ground Corner. Neighbors identified the victim as Arlington Butler. He was in his early 20s. Family members were overcome with grief as undertakers carted Butler's body away from his home. Now police officials say that the victim was standing in front of this white truck when he was shot. He then ran a short distance away to the front of his residence where he collapsed and died. Persons unknown approach him. We believe at least two persons were together. One of them produced a handgun and began discharging shots in his direction. Now a small crowd gathered as police conducted their investigation. For resident Basil Sawyer though, the broad daylight shooting occurred several feet away from his home. He says, however, he still feels safe. We heard this thing going pow, 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 pow. We thought it was the kids sometimes they knock on the stop sign right there. You know, we thought it was that one, we said pow, pow, pow. We thought it was a crackers or something, but you know, something like that, you know, it's, it's, it, it, go, it goes deep into you, you know, because when you've got you and yourself and hear things like that every day, every day like that, everybody needs the Lord now. You need to pray hard. We try our best sometimes, but it, like, it get out of hand now. You know, every day, every day, the same thing. Every day, is, you know, you die, you know, you know, who ain't get you, get shook up. It's bad. It's very sad. Meanwhile, Superintendent Paul Rowe said that far too many persons who are arrested, imprisoned, and released on bail end up dead. He added that while there may be a fair of crime among some, the police remains undeterred to ensure that residents are safe. I think Nassau is a, a, a safe place. Uh, we are always concerned when we have these murders that are occurring, and uh, we I can't stress enough to persons to utilize the criminal justice system to settle their disputes. Now this is the third murder recorded this week and police officials are appealing to anyone with information to contact them as soon as possible. Janae Noel Ferguson, ZNES Network News. Now less than 50 minutes after police wrapped up their initial investigation into that homicide, they were called to the Wolf Road area where a police involved shooting literally brought traffic at the busy thoroughfare to a standstill. A female occupant of the vehicle was reportedly unharmed but taken to hospital for treatment. Police liaison officer, Assistant, Com Assistant Police Commissioner Stephen Dean explained that officers were attempting to stop the occupants of the silver Honda when they were forced to fire. This resulted in a number of bullet holes on the side of the vehicle and the back of the car was damaged as well. Police was trying to get the vehicle to stop, a very suspicious vehicle, heavily tinted vehicle. So um, there was gun shots were fired um, at the vehicle. Vehicle was damaged, um, but we can say at this point um, no injuries, no reports of injuries to anybody. But we can say a female was taken to a hospital just to be checked by medical doctors. ACP Dean warned motorists that if a police officer cautions you to stop, you should do so. He added that police will be patrolling various areas and conducting road checks more frequently. Some discomfort at different times um, that police have to do road checks, police have to do vehicle checks, and so because of what is happening in our country, and so we want to say to persons too who might be in possession of firearms, um, illegal drugs, um, police will continue to pursue you because most of our instances are being used with firearms, so police will continue to target those offenders who ride our streets with a vehicle. 
There are a number of persons riding the streets vehicle with firearm inside these vehicles. So the police will continue to seek them out and bring these persons to justice. Police also reported today that a man on the country's most wanted list was shot in the Nassau village area by police. He was taken to hospital for further treatment. His condition is unknown at this time. The police also continue to warn members of the public to refrain from posting disturbing images on social media, especially those involving children with weapons. Just yesterday, a 26-year-old man was arrested for firearm possession and dangerous drugs after photos surfaced on social media of him allegedly in possession of suspected drugs and an unlicensed firearm in the presence of a toddler. Officer in charge of the Central Detective Unit, Chief Superintendent Roll, said an aggressive approach is underway. Yeah, uh, we, we have seen uh, a bit of that, persons uh, displaying their weapons, and I'm going to ask them to desist from doing that. Uh, we, we, as the Royal Bahamas Police Force, have, has decided to take a, a zero-tolerance approach to it, and at some point today, we'll have a young man being taken before the court again for a similar thing. Wherever we find him, uh, we're going to take action against him. Crime and other national issues and concerns are open for discussion through the Stronger Bahamas Initiative and is now in full effect and the government is seeking participants regardless of social or economic status, island of origin or political party preference. They want you to communicate your ideas, aspirations and priorities for the future of the Bahamas through in-person discussion groups to be held on 11 islands. Groups of 12 people will be randomly selected to participate in the discussions. The discussion groups will be moderated by an independent third-party facilitator and will begin on Monday, August 31st at various locations in Nassau and the Family Islands. The meetings will start in Long Island and end in New Providence on September, on September 30th. Now, if you want to participate, you can email your details at info at strongerbahamas.com or you can call 242 636 8943 and leave a voicemail message or you can get more information on the website at www.strongerbahamas.com This portion of the news is brought to you by the new Shell and Letter designed for extra miles.